Hey, this is your buddy, Peace and Harmony. We are zooming in and focusing uh, and taking on the issue really once again of the narcissist pathological need for attention and a pathological sense of importance uh, coupled with a lack of empathy and really sort of the impact that this experience creates for others. Uh, before you have the label, before you have the name of a uh, doctor, lawyer, Indian chief, mother, father, brother, sister, teacher, aunt, whatever it is, before that label, just understand that this is an experience you have. Uh, this is an experience you have. And this is an experience you have. If you are still having it, then it's in the present moment where if you still feel fearful, anxiety, uh, you're still wounded, you're still hurt, you're having difficulty just feeling like uh, you're individual, uh, strong, have the potential for happiness. If, if you still feel that you have an emotional stag that's still snag, that sort of still got you, um, like, a, like a fish hook, you're not able to move forward, or it's pulling you back, or it's stopping you from moving forward. You can't quite dive in, you know, you can't get your feet wet even though you want to. Um, this is a sign that there is still these uh, the imprinted program. Um, I feel from that focus state, that trance state, that train wreck state that a narcissist or a psychopath will create in order to keep that pathological need for attention, admiration, uh, validation of them, especially as to the exclusion of you. So it's not wrong to give somebody attention, approval, high five, uh, have, have a mentor. Uh, but it's another thing to do this to somebody who hurts you simultaneously. So in other words, it keeps you stuck. So if you're admiring, respecting, deferring to someone who is abusive towards you or has this need for attention and is not giving that same experience uh, within, then you are in a deprived, you are depriving yourself state. And it's set up in the beginning from the narcissist before there was any boundary, awareness, knowing of judgment, good or bad. So before judgment took place, before that construct, um, you know, it was rapid. It was unconscious. It was just an instinct. Um, it was, it just is, uh, you know, it just is, uh, it's what you might call isness, <laughs> uh, whatever it just is uh it's just the human condition um it's just how your the the human being works so you have to realize the power of this and this power is not advertised to spoken to discussed unless you understand or study or understand really the impact or need find yourself in a need state like i really need to do this this year i really need to you know when you're sort of at that experiential level um, and it doesn't mean that you have to hurt others at all costs, yada, yada. You know, oftentimes there's this guilt that's imbued. I'm doing something wrong by healing. Uh, this is going to affect my identity if I heal. Usually there's some sort of grabbing onto, um, especially with the survival or the identity, where if your identity is wrapped up into this pressure outside of yourself as being the fuel then you're going to feel very afraid if you let go of this fuel source. You know, uh, this is my cold that runs my life. This is my fuel. This is my wood. This is my, uh, this is my lantern. Um, this is my, you know, what is, you know, what are you feeling? Because you, you're continually feeling that up at the subconscious level. You know, this is like the fire that you come to every day and you focus on. So it's a subconscious focus. And if you're going to remove this barrier and remove this pain, you have to realize that oftentimes there is this trans or transfect tra uh, train wreck like state and a narcissist or a psychopath will tell you that they want this, encourage this, reinforce this, will use their manipulation, particularly that of fear, guilt, and obligation. They will lay that on you thick, heavy, like the thickest French cream, 
you can't digest, give you lactose intolerance, digestive issues, you know, but you're having to ingest this and digest this and process this and your body's like, uh-uh, you know, uh, this ain't going down very well. Uh, you know, the chocolate flourless cake, that might go down very well. Oftentimes though, this sort of habit, this sort of emotional ingestion habit, an emotional consumption habit is what we're talking about. And especially I feel in the event of the pandemic, not only with the huge loss um, and stress of, um, of people's family members, uh, the fear of having older family members who are catching this, who are experiencing health issues, the feeling of helplessness is just like catastrophic. It is beyond uh, measure. Uh, so it's very difficult uh, to, for people to really manage this. Um, it becomes very uh, vast, sort of omnipotent, if you will. Um, really gestalt, really the big deal. It's really the big Monty. It becomes really what you're feeling and it can drive people, uh, you know, to feel, uh, you know, very angry, very hostile, very uh, feeling of un unfairness, just really bringing out these very highly agitated states where, you know, they'll knock into walls, knock their hand, you know, make all sorts of problems. I mean, this is what um, anger, unresolved anger uh, looks like when it's played out on the flute, the trombone, the drums, whatever it is, is being played out. This is what's happening. So if we're going to resolve this um, and to resolve uh, this um, identity state um, that oftentimes is created and founded and centered around this ingredient, in other words, this negativity, um, this translate state, and oftentimes that your survival is then um, webbed or meshed with this. So in other words, when you are on the narcissist, the narcissist has you in their grip, their talons, their clutch, whatever it is, their spell. We had a viewer who said this feels like a spell or something. So they, I think the narcissist and the psychopath, this is desirable. Uh, for them because they have an insatiable need. Sometimes they're entertainers. Um, sometimes they're movie stars, business people. So they require uh, a, a captive audience, but oftentimes at what price? And so um, the problem uh, then, of course, is then identifying uh, with this. I mean, your I am is enmeshed or webbed or wedded to this, um, which is kind of a flawed um, identity. Um, a, not a flawed identity, not an identity flaw, but it's an error of creating an I am out with an external sort of uh, state, which is not intrinsic to your, your true instinct. So it, it begins to sort of set that whole compass awry. And then that sort of foundation, that buoyancy, if you will, it becomes imbued with something that is more uh, based on negativity, pain, adversity, uh, which is not all bad. Uh, poverty, I mean, these are sort of uh, feeling of deprivation states or feeling that things are out of control and painful. So there can be a lot of energy to this. So people might have had then a habit of reinforcing this emotional state. In other words, um, Every, you know, I just reinforce, so emotional habits that have been reinforced. Um, in other words, your I am is then inextricably connected for some reason or for maybe many reasons that you know that make sense. But it's important that you understand that it's okay, normal and natural to have an I am state that is separate from this negativity. Like the narcissist, they will tell you that they try to uh, have that effect or influence like a train wreck. In other words, what is the train wreck? If we can just dissect that for a moment. <clears throat> the train wreck <clears throat> is where you are focused on something because you feel 
something catastrophic or negative is going to happen and that you would be a terrible person if you left the scene. In other words, here goes this whole thing going down. Who am I if I just leave this train wreck? So that's empathy, your empathy kicking in. You know, uh, save human life. This is valuable. This is important. I mean, this is natural guttural. This is your, you know, and oftentimes your uh, your self esteem is your your solar plexus is then connected. The feeling there. You know, who am I? You know, if I, you know, so you don't think through this, but it's just an automatic process. So you kind of have to be able to use the role of metacognition, the ability to think about what you're thinking about, and then. The profound ability to reflect um, is sort of part of your healing and then removing that barrier is to understand um, that train wreck and you know you weren't sitting in the amusement park looking at the train wreck you're kind of behind an eight-foot fence looking at the train wreck and you're trying to you know and then who would you know so in other words part of the train wreck is I have to be attended to because I might need to rescue somebody I might need to help clean up this aftermath. I might need to call this. I might need to. I might need to. I might, I might. So it commits you uh, to that train wreck, I feel, that that's part of the trauma bond, is that you, as a human being with empathy, you might need to go there and call, you know, whatever it is, the 911, the help, the fire, the police, the, you know. So you have, do you see how you might need to be there? So you kind of are like, well, this is my post. I'm kind of like posted here, you know, and so you have, you know, it becomes a have to. It's, it doesn't become an element of choice when you're dealing with that subconscious. The subconscious is going to take over. The heart is going to beat. The lungs are going to breathe. The food is going to digest. The instinct um, and the impulse is going to be there. It's one in the same. It doesn't make you a bad person uh, because you've been committed to this, to what you might feel this sort of train wreck, and then what it is it going to stay on the tracks? Is it going to not? And so, what about for a change? If you were to save yourself, what if you are in this train wreck? What are you going to do? Is it actually you in this train wreck? And are you actually sort of externalizing this when it's actually um, you? You know, we need to find the you uh, right here um, in this train wreck. And how did you, you know, where are you? Um, and is it okay to rescue you? Is there a you that needs to be attended to? Is there a you who, you know, the Andy Frank needs to come over? Hey, you know, this is, you know, we need, we need to save you. Here's your oxygen mask. Here's your exit door. Here's your flotation advice. Did anybody come around to you and give you that so you can bob on to safety or was that not you know an option or did you have to not listen to that was that not okay um because oftentimes in that trance state there's that um you know what almost might feel like um some sort of sinfulness or what like our viewer said they feel like there's this spell and that they're going against uh something that they would then forever pay the price with and never be able to, you know, so their, their mind is sort of on this fanta fantasy, which oftentimes the narcissist and the psychopath will use to their advantage to really trauma bond people so they can be there as supply, be there when they're needed, be there to vent on, for them to be there to do whatever, pay their bills, uh, you know, use them um, oftentimes as a whipping post um, or a supply source, whether it's to be in the audience, um, you know, whatever it is um, that is required by that unique combination. <clears throat> Excuse me, we're just waking up here for the day. <clears throat> so, in other words, then, so how do you remove that? Is to understand the reason of the guilt, the reason of the fear, and the reason of the obligation subconsciously. And how that was uh, an automatic process. So you can't fault for yourself. Like when you go to the doctor and they're checking your reflexes and they're giving you that rubber hammer under the knee, 
You're not going to go, oh, sorry, doc, uh, my knee flung up. Uh, you're not going to apologize. Um, when uh, they listen to your heart, yeah, my heart's beating. I'm sorry you had to do that. You're breathing. Oh, I'm sorry you had to check my breathing. I'm so sorry you had to check. Are you apologizing for yourself? You know, and to what degree, uh, you know, are you uh, apologizing for uh, for being, existing, um, you know, needing something that this person could not satisfy and then the guilt of having to look away from the train wreck. Uh, you know, in other words, uh, there's a feeling of loss. Maybe there's a loved one, uh, a, a, a cherished one, some of your roots are in the, you know, what is in the train? Um, what kind of stuff, you know, in other words, you can understand um, that how important it is to you when you really get that guttural feeling because your vagus nerve your intuition and also how to move forward is sort of centered there. So if you block that, then you can't sort of respond to moving forward because that's where your intuition, that's where that sort of, sort of process, the vagus nerve, it's part of your central nervous system. I mean, it's just, you can study this and this becomes like part of your instinct, your guttural feeling, your I am, your intrinsic motivation, your inner fuel. You know, are you like a Tesla, you know, are you, do you got a battery? Are you still at the pump? Is your, is your fuel clean? Is it gunky? You know, what is going on there? So really understand, sort that out. I think it'll help you to understand that process and then realize your own guilt system, like the tablet that you've been living by, your own commandments or what is keeping that fear, obligation, and guilt in place. So look at that tablet. Look at the commandments. And what what commandment is this part of uh, for you? What commandment are you following when you're adhering to that fear? This is your buddy and then the obligation and the guilt because usually there's some sort of command that you are following. Um, and so in, um, realize then, where are you on the tablet? Um, are you on the tablet? And if not, why not? Do you feel that you don't deserve your second class, second rate? You know, a female doesn't get put there. A male, a boy, a girl, a this, a, you know. Do you see how your own judgment is keeping you off of your own happiness checklist? I hope you grow in this awareness. This is your buddy, Peace and Harmony. I hope these videos, tools, and discussion do help. Uh, if the you know channel has been a good resource, please feel free to give back. Please feel free to donate, comment, share, like, put on notifications, whatever it is for you. Um, you know, and then replay this, revisit this, um, and I hope this does help. Have a, a great day.